Hello everyone, Curtis White here from the Cannondale CyclocrossWorld.com team and today we are racing the Super Prestige in Zolder. This is an iconic track and venue, formerly a World Cup, but this year is the first year it's a Super Prestige and it starts here on the screaming fast home stretch of the Husden Zolder F1 racing track. Now today the course was dry with only really one wet spot that really wasn't that consequential and around 40 degrees Fahrenheit or 4 to 5 centigrade and a strong tailwind down the start finish straight. And for tires, I chose the Challenge Grifos at 26, 27 PSI, or around 1.8 bar. And as we went under that start finish banner, there was a bottleneck shift to the left, and we're kind of against the barricades here. But we're starting to approach the hole shot at the end of the straightaway, and we're coming off this screaming fast full gas start, and we're fighting into this first corner, bending to the right. It's a near 180, slamming on the brakes. And while it seems like there's a nice rut going through that corner and it's getting burned in, there's always problems through that corner. It's just it's a hard bottleneck. There's a lot of people fighting for those top positions. Something always goes wrong. But we hop onto the pavement, quick crossover, by pit one. And this course is really so fast and hard packed that there's really no need to go into the pits unless you're having a serious mechanical issue. So back on the grass here, we saw a really unfortunate crash through that corner with Ely Izabit. Sounds like he's doing okay. But in the pre-ride, you could see that in the pre-ride, the turning is a little bit slower. So the rut was a little closer to that stake. And as the race gets faster and faster, the line gets pushed out a little bit. So maybe that had a factor to do with it. But I can't speculate too much. So a couple more nice burned in corners onto the pavement here. A couple tight turns. Again, in the early laps, this is an opportunity to really move up or jockey for position. You really have to be careful and protect your space onto this little sandy area. A nice rut was getting burned into this 180 here. Unless you're further back in the pack, it's easy to ride that. But if you're a little further back and in bad position, you're off running that. And you could see the traffic on the first lap through this part of the course. Up over this part of the hill. And we're coming into this next part of the course where the course really starts to file down. And there's a lot of single file traffic through here. And in the position that you're in, you're kind of stuck in that. And it's really difficult to move up through the next couple minutes or so. You will see a couple trees in the course here it's nice to bend wide here and we're dropping down onto the pavement to the right it's a nice rut that started to form onto the pavement the straight isn't long at all you're shooting back up this berm here a couple nice ruts in that sand then we're bending to the right and we'll see a couple roots start to be exposed this is one of those courses that we've been racing on for so many years and over the years the world championships were here a few years ago we've had a number of world cups and high level races and the course doesn't change from year to year so much so the course gets torn up. A lot of these same roots have been exposed over the years. Here we see one kind of shoots you out through that corner. Be a little ginger with the tires coming up. There are a couple of roots right there. And we're going to be dropping down to this iconic 180 switch. Drop down 180 right back up the hill. This is another part of the course that if you're in traffic or in poor position, unfortunately you may be running this part of the course. And it is much faster to stay on the pedals on the bike and come down that descent right there. A little root on the outside of that corner, but it's one of those turns where you, there's a nice burn on the outside and you can really carry your momentum well. And we're starting to approach, this is the legendary sanctuary that no crowds and spectators are normally welcome up here. And this is something that the race tries to protect, but you'll see there's a couple stone ledges. We're coming up to the top of this climb, across these stone ledges. And we're starting to crest this hill and we're going to drop back down towards the F1 track and we're just absolutely flying through here this rut bending to the right has been burned in for years at this point and this is another iconic part of the course where there are a number of trees in the middle of the course it's obviously very easy to see you're not going to be hitting any of these trees but it's one of those staples of belgian cyclocross and this course really isn't all that difficult there are a lot of iconic features and parts of the course but it's really so fast and just the course has so much character to it and that's what makes this such a great track so now we're into the headwind section, and if you're not in the group, this is a hard part of the course to really go on alone, and this is the part where you really want to make that effort to get to the wheel in front of you. Here we have a little bottleneck here to really check the speed. And I've said this in previous videos, but with the Super Prestige Series races, they tend to run the higher barriers full 40 centimeters. They're a little bit wider, just so they can have the advertising screens on the other side of the barriers where the cameras are, typically four to five meters apart. But we're coming by pit two here. Over the barriers, there was an advantage to bunny hopping just so you're on the pedals a little bit sooner. 
if you're running over the barriers, it's a little bit more advantageous to get in front of whoever you're with and if they're bunny hopping, just to kind of check their speed and make them come around you. But as we come by pit two, we're hopping back on the pavement briefly. Again, this really isn't that heavy of a course. There's really no reason to pit, even if it's raining. The sand and the mud is really light on the bike, so there's really no reason to be changing bikes unless you have a serious mechanical problem. But we're approaching one of the last opportunities to really get on the group that's right in front of you just to make sure you're staying in the draft because the course is so wide open. That draft effect is more important than other cross races. But as we cut up to the left here on this off camber, this is part of the course that's played a big role in shaping the outcome of this race in years past. And if you go back a few years, one of the original Svenness videos from Bill Scheiken and CX Hairs, now part of the wide angle podium, analyzes the difference between the high and the low line here. And this is also the corner that Mathieu van der Poel and Walt van Aert got tangled up at the World Championships were held here a few years ago. But with this edition being so dry and fast, there's really not much to analyze here. As you see that the low line is a little bit more burned in. And that slingshot really gives you a little bit extra momentum on this pavement section. We're approaching the steep stand drop. Right now I just hopped on the wheel of Joris Neuenhaus from Sunweb World Tour team. Dropping down here. Just in the drops. Wait back. Try to carry your speed. There was a nice rut that was being burned on the outside right of that turn. But check the speed off the bike. Shouldering up these stairs. With momentum you could go two stairs at a time. Quick remount at the top and the climb still goes up here. There's a little bit more elevation. It's When it's wet, this can be a really heavy, sandy, gritty part of the course. Up into an easier gear, that steep pitch. This is really the only wet part of the course. But if you muscle the bike up, you can really get up and over that hump. And this part is a little bit of a recovery. It's all single file through the next 30, 40 seconds of the course. And we're in the last minute, really. But shooting up the side, the line is really to the outside. And it's really loose ground outside of this rutted area right left weight back maintain that traction muscle the bike up and over and this descent is really fast but you'll start to see it's really chattery with the brakes it's been used so many times over the last few years there's a nice route forming to the outside now my weight's a little far back and i don't get this but yours noonhouse does a nice little whip off that ledge there and we're roughly about 350 meters from the finish line at this point off that last drop course slowly bends to the right and it's dead flat all the way you're starting to get a tailwind coming in and the sprint starts now and that's the course it's a typically fast track with hard accelerations on the f1 speedway and you have to be really smart about racing within the group and holding your position and protecting your line so i hope you enjoyed this video thank you for watching please subscribe for more videos through the course of the cyclocross season and share with your friends and you can visit curtisjwhite.com slash in the red for more content Take care, stay healthy, keep riding, and we'll catch you next at the World Cup in Dendermont. It'll be nice. I exit here. Okay. Good luck.